Just because you can share something doesn't mean you should. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about oversharing, what that is, kind of how it affects others because other videos I've seen that people cover this topic kind of spin it in a way of the reason why you shouldn't overshare is to be a mysterious woman, which I guess, but I think kind of the part we're missing here is really how it's affecting other people that are, you know, gaining that information that maybe they just didn't sign up for. And I think part of the thing we need to address first, what oversharing is, let's start with that, okay? Oversharing it tends to be people that are extremely open about everything. They tell everyone their business, whether they're putting it on social media or they're telling everyone and their mom about what's going on in their life, like, you know, exactly what Sally Sue is up to. And these people, tend to come off with a persona of being very authentic or an open book, like I said earlier, and just always putting it out there, being very open and honest about everything. And almost in a way where they're like, I don't, I don't understand why you're uncomfortable talking about this. Well, maybe not everyone signed up for that. Not everyone signed up for your Ted talk about X, Y, and Z. Okay. And most of the time I do feel like these people, the oversharers, which I am a recovering oversharer. I definitely, was very much like this in high school, college. I'm slowly, gradually tapering off that habit. And I think a lot of the time people that are overshares tend to come from a place of connection. Because as humans, we, we have a strong desire and need for love and belonging. Like that is hardwired into our DNA. Look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you have no idea what that is, that'll kind of explain more. But it is hardwired in our DNA to want to belong to others and connect with others. And sometimes this oversharing connects you a little too fast where it speeds up the relationship process. It, it's basically trying to get that intimacy without the trust and trust takes time to build, right? And people that are oversharers, I mean, they're telling everyone, they're telling the World Wide Web, they're telling the social media, they're telling their best friends, their acquaintances, complete strangers, all of the nitty gritty details of their life. And I have also been on the receiving end of an overshare, especially with strangers. And at first, a part of me took it as like, oh, you know, I'm glad I could be here for someone that clearly needed to vent. Cause sometimes I think that is part of oversharing is maybe you're just in a moment, something happened. You just need to talk to someone and vent and let it all out there. And I do think, you know, if you don't have a close friend or someone like that is necessary to kind of get it out, but also maybe just write it in a journal. Maybe just write it in a journal and not have to tell everyone that. The first thing I kind of want to talk about is whenever you are telling someone your information, your business, what's going on in your life, the gossip, the tea, not everyone is going to keep your secrets. Even the people that are really close to you will tell other people. And you have to really know your audience with this. And that comes with time, trust, trial and error of really knowing who you can tell what to and knowing it will stay within them. And so I think that's part of it is you need to know who you can talk to because just because you tell one person doesn't mean it's not gonna go everywhere else. And overshares for the most part do tell everyone to begin with, but there are some people that just overshare even to their best friends. And that is sometimes a boundary that doesn't need to be crossed. And on the flip side of that, of having your secrets be told to others, is not everyone wants the burden of harboring those secrets. The, the true secret keepers that they're not going to tell anyone, they're gonna carry it to their grave with them. It can be kind of heavy to be holding on to other people's baggage. And as a friend, yes, maybe that's part of it, is you being there for that person, being a shoulder to lean on, to cry on, all of those things, just showing up. I do think, you know, we need that. But at the same time, like, just be careful of what information you're divulging and telling to your friends because they might not have signed up for that. Like, whenever, I feel like the most common example I can think of is when you find out um, or your friend is cheating on their boyfriend or something or whatever and they tell you that now you're in a place of do i tell the boyfriend well it's not my business but like i know about it this person's getting hurt and i I'm, i know this information it puts people in like moral dilemmas that no one wants to be in no one wants that because they might have to decide to do something with that information 
or if not, again, it's just that mental, mental turmoil of, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up to harbor and be your secret keeper when it comes to really, really heavy things I'm talking about specifically. Um, very heavy stuff where you're like, ugh, I want to be able to talk to someone about this because this is too heavy for me to carry kind of thing. And another thing we have to consider is not everyone cares. Not everyone cares what's going on in your life, whether it's good, bad, ugly. Some people simply just don't care. And I think that is where it comes into play of, again, knowing your audience. Is it the right time? Is it the right place? Is this the right person I should be talking to about this? And whenever you start over sharing, you really gotta look, are they even listening to me? Are they asking me follow-up questions? You know, are they genuinely interested? Because the signs, non-verbal especially, will be there. Of them maybe looking at their phone, maybe looking away, maybe just letting you talk and just, and nothing, you know? And I think part of sometimes what happens if people are oversharing is it's coming again from a connection perspective, so they're oversharing and then expecting you to do the same and reveal your secrets. So it's a little bit of a transactional um, situation. And that's kind of what I was mentioning in the beginning about trying to build that intimacy rather quickly without that trust. And that's something that really should take course over the span of days, weeks, months, years, not just all in one night. And let's not forget, Oversharing is not always the oversharer's fault. There are people out there, I'll say the jaded side of it, that do, they want to know just out of curiosity, yes, but how can that information later be used down the line? There are people out there. I don't think that's the majority of people whatsoever. I think that's a very small percentage. But the large percentage I'm talking about are the people that ask too many questions and think they deserve the right to know. And I do feel like this is becoming the large majority of people. And I don't necessarily think it's their fault. I think a lot of it comes from social media and things of that nature because everything's always out there to begin with. So we almost feel entitled and a right to know what's going on in someone's lives or you know more details than whatever they're even putting out there because it's like, well, why aren't you sharing? Everyone else is sharing. And I have been that person too that is asking questions where really it's just none of my business. It's none of my business. And truly it has come up from a place of curiosity or just trying to talk it out with someone or things like that. But I do, this is again, something I'm having to work on too of just, it's not my business and really kind of doing what my mom does. My mom is an amazing woman and I am very, very close with her. And I feel like her magical skill being a mama is letting me tell her what I want. She doesn't really ask a whole lot of questions. She's really just there to listen and to guide me, you know, whenever I am telling her stuff. But I think that is what caused our relationship to be close because she never tried to pry. She always welcomed whatever I was going to tell her and didn't try to dive deeper into that. And I think that's something a lot of us can take away is we are not entitled and do not have a right to know whatever the other person is thinking and what's going on in their life. And that's where boundaries really come into play and that's something I've really had to work on. And an unhealthy boundary is linking intimacy to sharing everything about you. And I remember early on, probably not even early on, I would say maybe like two years into my relationship with my husband, um, what was it? I don't, I don't remember the situation in great detail, but it was something occurred where like, maybe he went out, had a boys night, and I was like, so what'd y'all talk about? You know, give me the gossip, like I wanna know. And that's definitely coming from a person that, again, I felt like, okay, well this isn't, it's not like a random stranger, this is my husband, he should tell me everything. And my husband, at first it really threw me off because he didn't wanna tell me what the boys were talking about. And at first I was like, what do you mean you don't wanna tell me? Like, you are my husband, I, felt entitled to know, you know, anything that was going on, even if it had nothing to do with us and other couples. But I only felt that way because that's how I was. If any of my friends were telling me this was going on, I was the type of person where I'm not going to tell all your secrets to everyone and their dog, but I will tell my husband. And that's part of me being the person that sometimes when someone tells me something really heavy, I need to let it out and my person 
my person, my husband is the person I feel like, you know, I can let it out to him and it's going to end there. It's not going to spread to other people. And so this was something that I had to learn in our relationship was that boundary of just because you are my husband and you are my like, you know, number one person in life doesn't give me any more right to know, you know, kind of other people's secrets that they are sharing with him. And that has been something I have truly been inspired by and respect him even more for after learning that from him of just how respectful he is of other people's information and withholding that. The last thing I wanna leave y'all with is to kind of help um, navigate these overshare conversations is really thinking before you speak, but it's the think acronym. It's T-H-I-N-K and the T stands for is what I am about to say true, right? We're not doing gossip. H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? This tends to be the one question I really try and ask myself before I say anything is, is what I'm about to say necessary? Is it? And then the last one, K, is it kind? This kind of goes back to the old rule of if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. And I feel like really remembering that acronym has really helped me become the person that I am today and not oversharing as much and also being a kinder person and not not saying everything I'm thinking because, you know, not all of our thoughts are positive. And kind of just the overarching question is what is the purpose of the information I'm sharing with someone and what is my why behind it? Am I trying to connect with them? There's other ways to go about that. You know, that will be revealed in time. You don't have to kind of rush the process. If you're on the receiving end of oversharing, I think it's absolutely okay for you to be like, you know, I'm kind of uncomfortable talking about this. Boom. Thank you for being honest and also saying I didn't sign up for this. But that is all I wanted to share with y'all today. I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments, kind of about oversharing and whether you've struggled with it, kind of if you've been on the receiving end of it, how it made you feel. It's definitely a fine line to toggle. Um, and I think it does take practice, but I will see y'all on my next one. Bye.